If there's one creative effect that I love above all others in the Fab Filter box, it's Saturn. I'm not saying it's the best. They're all the best at what they do. It's just Saturn, the saturation and distortion plugin, is great for adding something to your audio that wasn't already there. Great plugins like Pro DS or Pro C don't add to the sound, they enhance the sound. Anyway, let's have a look at Saturn's user interface here. I've got a copy of it here, inserted on our guitar track, and I've got it viewed in expanded mode. And you can choose between the expanded and the normal mode by clicking down at the bottom right hand corner. This is the VST3 version of the plugin, so it adapts to whether it has a mono or stereo signal going through it. If you do have a stereo signal, you'll see the familiar extra rings around some dials, as we've seen in other FabFilter plugins. Also familiar are the ABing and undo and redo options across the top, and this presets button with a multitude of getting started options. I'll get back to this later. Let's look at the other buttons and the dials first. Here's the bypass button, and here you can save your adjusted parameters as a preset with this button. And below we have these four dials. This mix dial allows you to have 100% of affected sound, or dialed down towards 0%, you'll get a blend of the dry signal. Moving along we get feedback, and you can use this to feed varying amounts of a delayed copy of a particular chosen frequency band. And we'll look at how to create multiple frequency bands in a moment. But here, with one frequency band at present, we can feed a delayed version back into the main input. Related to this dial is the adjacent frequency dial. It focuses on and sets the ring in frequency of a feedback loop. FabFilter provide the comparison in their help guide to be like placing a microphone in front of an amplifier. And as you move this mic closer to the speaker, the higher the ring in frequency. We'll listen to the effect of this later to get a better idea. The dynamic style allows you to either expand or compress the dynamics of the level. Turned anti-clockwise expands the dynamic range, whilst dialing clockwise compresses the chosen frequency band. You might have guessed by now that this button is the familiar style button present in most FabFilter plugins. You'll reveal a good number of preset specific related styles here. Now as I've got this inserted on our guitar track, I'll choose Clean Tube for now. The larger, most predominant parameter is this centrally located drive dial. At present it's set to 20%, so we'll add in or colour whatever preset we've chosen by that amount. So you can see then, whatever preset you choose and however you adapt it, by using the drive dial, you'll be able to blend gradations, shall we say, of how much that effect is imposed, and focused on a particular frequency band. You'll no doubt notice the red gradient colour scheme above becomes more or less intense as you drive the dial up or down. This is affecting the whole audio signal at the moment because we've set to one frequency band. But to add up to six split frequency bands, move over the main display and where you see that plus button emerge, click to split at that point. And then you can left click and drag the vertical split point to a different frequency crossing point and the frequency is indicated above in the rectangular information box. The buttons and parameters below move across the screen to situate below the selected band. If I choose band 1 by selecting the volume slider, the parameters below reposition to affect this band only. The volume slider attenuates by dragging down and amplifies by moving up. I'll double click in here to type in 0 dB to go back to the neutral position. Remember, you can click to access six frequency bands if you require that many. OK, so that's a lot of the theory. What I've now done is I've chosen a preset appropriate for this guitar, and I've zoomed in closer. The preset chosen is Big Warm Cleanish, which you'll find in the Guitar Amps and then the Smooth folder. But of course you can choose any preset, I'm just using this as an example. This preset has two frequency bands by default, and I could add to them, but I'm not going to at the moment. What I will do is I'll start playback, and I'll adjust the parameters later to modify the preset. But for right now, I just want to listen to a few seconds of the guitar. This guitar will sound slightly different to the original, because this preset has the drive dialed up to around about 75%.
and you'll see that band 1 has a gain boost of 4 decibels to increase those frequencies by that amount. Remember though you're not restricted to where the preset bands are. You could drag this vertical slider to adjust the frequency crossover point. Now I'm not going to, but it's there should you need to. Possibly you want to change the style. I'll change from smooth amp to warm tape. And we'll have a listen in cycle mode and modify as we go along. I'll reduce the level for band 1 frequencies. As it's reduced, you can hear the bottom end fall away. So I'll take it back up again. I'll adjust band 2 too to suit the audio. And of course you can carve out specific frequency areas this way. I will add another band and I'll adjust its level down considerably. And with band 3, I'll emphasize this frequency area by 1 decibel. Maybe the bass area is too much now, so I'll reduce that. I might want to blend in the dry signal too. I'll sweep through to hear the difference. Now on reflection, I think I am going to leave it at 100% but I will increase the feedback to add in a delayed copy of this band, band 1. If I now select band 2, I can modify this band's feedback and frequency point. And with band 2, I'll try out expanding and compressing the dynamic range by rotating the dynamics dial. Going anti-clockwise expands our dynamic range, whereas going clockwise compresses it. Remember, this is for band 2 only. I'll return to neutral. As you can see, band 2 has a drive setting of 53%. Well, you can modify this as required. Now, I'll select band 3 by clicking within the band 3 area. I'll drive this up to around 76%, but reduce the band 3 drive to 29%. Notice to the right of the drive dial, we have four tone sliders to modify further. I can adjust the selected band's bass, mid, treble and presence here to modify the generated harmonics from this algorithm. Notice too, I can adjust the level with this inner dial. As I adjust, you'll notice the band's volume slider move in parallel. Or conversely, move the slider to see the dial move in numeric sympathy. I'll take to 0 dB. At the foot is this HQ button. I'll activate this high quality mode to engage 8x oversampling to help get rid of any aliasing. Now my main input and output dials at the moment are set below Unity in case of any extra volume caused by boosting bands. But I'll take to 0 dB for both. Simply click to reveal their respective dials as we've done with other FabFilter plugins. Right, I'm going to finish up for this tutorial now that we've had a look at Saturn's user interface and had a quick listen to this guitar track playing through a preset, whilst all the time modifying to suit.